Hey, family, how's it going? This is Joe Hodge, educator, entrepreneur, and I'm here to give you some inspiration today uh, and some information on financial freedom. Yes, how can you live a life where you're not worried about finances? And especially at your age, now is the perfect time to get started for it, all right? So I want to give you a couple of keys, a couple of tidbits of information. The first thing that you're going to need to have in order to have financial freedom is the right mindset. That's right, no stinking thinking. If you want to uh, have a million dollars, have a billion dollars, the first thing you got to do is believe that you can actually do it, right? Now, there's a lot of people in the world who don't believe um, having money is obtainable, don't believe that having a million dollars is something that you can do. Those are the kind of people that you want to stay away from, right? The first thing is believing that you can achieve financial freedom, all right? Um, most entrepreneurs have a mindset that they can do anything in the world and they're going to try to do it, right? And so that's the first thing I want you to have is that mindset that it can be done, all right? So the first key is having the can-do attitude. The second thing is going to be very, very important, um, and that is going to be managing your money, right? Um, you should know every dollar that comes in and every cent that goes out. Now, I know that sounds crazy. How am I going to know all of all the money that comes in and go out? So the, the key thing that we're going to do is have a budget, and I'm going to show you how to create a budget. Now, the purpose of a budget is to basically um, look at all your income, predict all your, your expenses, and just put them on paper so it makes sense, so you know where your money's going. So let's let's give a scenario. Let's just say, um, let's just my my my. Uh, I'll give you an example. This actually happened to me. Uh, the first job I ever had, I was at Taco Bell. Um, I worked two long, grueling weeks over at Taco Bell. Um, got my check. First thing that I got, I got a two hundred dollar check. The first thing I bought, nope, it wasn't shoes. Nope, it wasn't a shirt. I went and bought an ab flex. Now, now, I might be showing my age just a little bit, but the ab flex is one of those machines to where, uh, like, you kind of get it and you just push in and it tightens up the muscles uh, in your stomach, hence getting you abs. Um, after I spent my money on the ab flex, I only had about $30 left to last me a whole nother two weeks. Now, the point isn't, isn't that I bought an ab flex and I didn't have any money. The point is I didn't budget my money to last me for that time. Right, so I just wanna take a quick uh, second to kind of show you. So, so for example, that same $200 that I got, we're gonna create a budget for it. In this top left corner, we're gonna put the amount of money that we expect to, to have or come in. And then after that, we're gonna write all of our expenses down, what we predict or we think we're gonna have, all right? So let's just say we got $200. Um, the first thing that I wanna do, I wanna have some money in my pocket just in case I wanna to go to the movies, I wanna get something to eat, get something to drink. So I'm gonna budget for myself maybe $25 a week, right? Just on food, right? So if I'm getting paid, if we're getting paid twice a, a month every other, every other week, two weeks, I'm gonna budget $50 for me. Now I can do whatever I want with that money, all right? And let's just say um, I have my cell phone and I have apps, right? There's some, some games I like to play, and every month um, they take out, right? 99 cents here, a dollar there. Let's just say, on average, they're, they're going to take about $5 for that whole month. I'll just go ahead and take it out of this check right here, $5 on apps. Now, um, what else we got? Say, for example, I want to save some money, right? Uh, I want to have some money set away for a rainy day. I'm just going to do 20 bucks, right? Uh, 20 bucks doesn't seem that much. I don't think I'll miss it too much. Um, and there's a reason that we get to that 20, and I'll talk about it in just a second, right? So let's see how much of my money have I already spent. I spent $50 for me just for, for pocket money, $5 on my miscellaneous apps, um, and $20 to save. I have $75 of that $200 that I've already spent. Uh, which is going to leave me about $125 left, right? So I need to account for every cent of this $200. So I have $125 more to go. So let's just say I want to go shopping. Nothing wrong with going shopping. Nothing wrong with spending your money on you. The main thing is that you budget for it. So I'm going to budget to spend $100 on clothing or shoes, right? Whatever I see fit which brings us down to 175. I've got how much left? 
about $25 left. Um, let's just do something nice with it, right? Uh, let's just say if I'm a teenager, um, I live at home with my mom. I want to take my mom out to eat, maybe give her a little gas money, something like that, just to show my appreciation now that I have a job and I can take care of my own responsibilities. So I'm going to give mom just $25 just because I love her, right? So what we have done now, we've got the $50 plus the uh, five is 55. We have $20 that we're just going to save. It's going to bring, that's going to bring us to $75. $100 that we've budgeted for clothes brings us to $175. And now we have the $25 that we're going to give away to mom, um, which brings us to the total of $200. So that is exactly how you create a budget. Now, the budgets can vary uh, depending on the amount of money that you get. Some people, when they receive a paycheck, they get the same paycheck every week, every month. Um, if or some people just get a, a, a based upon the hours whatever your income is going to be however much that money is that you're going to get you need to put it right here in this top left corner uh, however much that you plan uh, for your expenses are going to go right here in the bottom right corner and so that is how we do a budget cool so let's, uh, let's go ahead and, well, we're going to keep this up right now. So the next thing that we need to keep in mind, um, after we have our can-do attitude, after we are managing our money, something very, very, very important, and it's so simple. If you never want to be broke again, I want you to use the 10% rule, okay? And I'll break that down for you. Out of all of the money that you receive, I always want you to save 10% of that. Right, and there's a very, very easy formula to to, to get that um, ten percent. Let's just say I have two hundred dollars to play around with. If I want to see how I can get to find out what ten percent of that is, simple rule. All I'm going to do is take out that last digit and put a uh, period or a comma, and that's going to leave me with twenty dollars. Um, let's just say you have some change, right? Let's just say you got $212.63. How in the world do I figure out what 10% of that is? We're going to apply the same method. We're going to get rid of that last number. And, you know, the decimal represents cents. So we're just going to move this cent sign over right here. And that's going to leave us with $21.26 is going to be 10% of that. All right. So why is 10% key? Why are we doing 10%? Uh, 10% allows you to, uh, one, it's not a big amount that you have to worry about, right? If you get a $200 check um, and you only saving 20, uh, $20 of it, it, it you're not going to really miss it that much. Most likely uh, you'll eat that real quick, right? And so the main thing is putting something to the side for it to save it later. Now, once you save this money, I don't want you to touch it at all all this is for our rainy day so imagine um, if you're working let's say you're working for four or five six months and you saved um, a good amount let's say after five months you you never touched it you have a hundred dollars in your emergency savings right and let's just say wh whatever you determine emergency is um, you drop your phone and you need to get your your screen replaced you now have the money to get that done right so if you always save ten percent and put it away to the side for a rainy day, you'll never go broke, right? Added bonus to that, um, this is something different, I'm gonna kinda extend on that. Um, if you never wanna be broke, save 10%. If you always wanna have money, save 10% and invest 15%. So let's write that down. We're gonna save 10% and we're gonna invest 15%. So if I have $200, 10% of that, I'm saving $20. 15% um, of that is going to be $30. Now, what am I going to do with this $30? And why is this, how is this $30 going to make me have money forever? So what I want you to do with that 15%, um, save it for a couple of months, and then I want you to invest in yourself in your own business. Super simple. Uh, we'll use the same amount. You got $200. Uh, you, 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 you save your 10% and you've also been saving 15% for two months. Uh, that's going to, going to get you at 60 bucks and 60 bucks can be turned into to a big number real easy. Say you take your $60, you go to HEB, buy some lemonade, you buy some lemons, buy some sugar, some water, 
make you a lemonade stand with that 60 bucks. After you sell out at the end of the day, you're probably going to have about $120. You have successfully flipped that 15% um, to 100 and what, do we, what did I say? 150 bucks. Um, and that only came from you managing your money and allocating it to go to a specific place, right? So again, uh, we automatically save 10%. So we don't go broke. And if we, if we always want to have money, we're going to dedicate 15% um, to invest uh, for ourselves. All right. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, um, on your way to financial freedom. Um, yes, it's important to save. Yes, it's important to invest. But the main thing is you also have to have a heart for helping. Um, scenario right here. If I have money in my hand and I'm always keeping it and I'm always doing what I want with it and I just keep a closed fist on it because it's my money, um, I have no room to receive anything. If I have money in my hand and I open my hand up and I give to others so they can be, so they can use it for their benefit or help someone in distress, I physically open up my hand to give someone something. I physically am opening myself up to receive, right? Uh, you sow what you reap. Um, so that is my, my, uh, my keys that my keys that I uh, suggest to you is also to have a heart of helping. So let's just go back from the top. Uh, the first thing that we have to have is what? Yes. Our can do attitude. We have to have a can do attitude. We have to be managers of our money. How do we, how do we become managers of our money? Yes. By creating a budget, our budget will help us dictate what our income is going to be and where our expenses, where our money is going out. All right. We know we got this much coming in. We're going to break this whole check down. So we know where every cent goes to. Um, and then that's going to help us be good managers of it. Right. If we never want to go broke, what are we going to do? We're going to save how much? What percent? We're going to save 10%. 10% saves us from those rainy days is going to be that umbrella. Our phone drops on a, we drop our phone, screen cracks. Uh, we have money to replace it. If uh, you get a surprise phone call and you got to go somewhere nice and you got to grab a nice shirt, uh, you have money in your savings to help you out with that, right? Um, and last but not least, um, or before that, we save 10%. Um, so we're never broke. If we always want to have money, we're going to invest 15% in a, a business of our own. Um, and that allows us to have money. And last but not least, we always want to have a heart to help someone else out. So again, I am Joe Hodge. I appreciate the time that you've taken to uh, invest in yourself um, and go out there. Let's start saving. Have a good one.